Let's explore the different effects you can create using acrylics in your background card. We're going to be looking at this, studying this card made by Kay Carley for Papercraft Inspirations. Kay's chosen to use Paper Artsy Fresco Finish Chalk Acrylic Paints. You want to squeeze out two 5 piece size blobs of hint of mint colour in opposite corners of a 12 centimetre white panel. Take a sponge wed and squeeze it round so you've got a surface like this. And then you just want to brush the two blobs of hint of mint across the card. The nice thing about using a sponge wedge here rather than a paintbrush is you get this nice texture on your card. Uh, because of the, the way that the sponge curls round you get this sort of textured finish. So feel free if you'd prefer a flat panel you can of course apply this with a paintbrush but this gives you a nice textured background to your card. These chalk finish acrylics are really quick drying which is great as a card maker it means you can uh, you can let them dry naturally between stages and it doesn't take too long and then they're dry and ready for stamping on but it does also mean that you need to clean up as you go along. Apply a small blob of dusty teal paint to the left side of the panel and using a different sponge web and starting from the edge of the panel gradually blend the paint in an up and down motion to give you a three or three and a half centimetre border. Add a little paint to the right hand edge as well sweeping the sponge wedge lightly up and down and now take the sponge web you used in the last step so that's the hint of mint paint sponge and just blend the two layers together with the residue of paint left on the sponge wedge and this softens the borders between the two colours. Now you want to take an artist palette, I'm just using an old lid from a yoghurt pot and apply a 5 piece sized bob of sage paint onto here you want to work this paint well into your sponge wedge, so I'm dabbing it in. We're going to use this to add some stencil detail to the card. The stencil we're using here is from Imagination Crafts, it's Apple Blossom. You want to hold it steady and lightly dab the paint over the image to add some of this detail to the side. You can attach the stencil with washi tape if you want to make sure it stays in place. I'm now turning it round 180 degrees and adding a few of these apple blossom sprigs to the top of the card. Again work the paint well into the sponge and then lightly dab it onto here to transfer the stencil pattern onto your card. You can either leave this to dry naturally now or I'm going to use a heat gun just to speed up the process so we can move on to the next step. Which is stamping. This chalk finish means that once this paint is dry it's really great for stamping on. So we're using a turquoise archival ink and I'm applying it to my stamp and because I want this to be part of the background of the design, I've stamped it on scrap paper first just to remove some of the ink before I stamp it on the panel. This just gives a more subtle background effect. I'm going to repeat this with this long stamp. The stamps we're using here are from Paper Artsy, they're J-O-F-Y 38 stamp set. So I'm stamping my second flower here. And now I want to change over to use this border stamp, which I'm going to put along the bottom of the card. So I'm inking up with the archival ink. It's great to use archival link here because regardless of this lovely colour we're going to add more detail later on so I want to make sure that I've got a really good firm image that's not going to be smudged. Now we want to add the spiky flower detail to the card. I'm going to use jet black archival link here. So I'm going to stamp this twice on the card to create the main focal point in this design. We're going to then go on to create a bit more colour and splash in this card with some Tim Holtz Distress Markers. These are really good uh, ways of adding colour to a design. The great thing about them is the colour tends to fade after a little while. So if you see this in your finished piece, don't worry, this is completely normal. It's just a nice way of adding a distressed effect, which is of course what Tim Holtz is so famous for. We're using a combination of squeezed lemonade with spiced marmalade for the flowers, then spun sugar with pickled preserves for the remainder of the card. Broken china is used in the stems and lines of the flowers, and squeezed lemonade to outline inside the border block. Now we're going to add a little more depth by adding some more stencils images from the apple blossom stencil. This time we're using a different colour, we want to use dusty teal, so I'm adding some to my artist palette. You want to slightly offset the stencils from the positions that you used before so you don't obliterate the first layer of stenciling but line up alongside instead. Now we're going to use Snow White Fresco Finish Paint and a flat paintbrush to add two 
strips of white onto the card. We're going to use these as the basis to stamp our sentiment on. So you need to make it long enough to, to uh, accommodate your sentiment. That's why I'm lining up my stamp here, just to make sure that I'm painting enough, enough width for my stamp. Once the panel is dry, finish by stamping your greeting and adding some doodle detail with a black fine liner around each of the boxes to give the card a nice sketchy finish. You can now embellish with gems or glitter or whatever you like and attach to the front of your card ready to send.